Okay, so welcome back. I'm going to try and see if, well, if I can do a twist attack on this mechanism here. Um, the idea is to see if I can get this piece here to fracture, potentially. Um, yeah, I know I can cut the cable with the cable cutters, whatever. It can be decoded and so on and so forth, but I want to just see can we actually twist this uh, enough to get it to fracture and uh, yeah we can do that potentially hold on to the other end there with another tool um, I've got these pliers I don't know how strong they will be to help us do a twisty attack on that, but I will try, I'll try. Uh, it's just this annoying rubber at the moment that's getting in the way. Same thing on that side. Then, don't know how. Yeah, it's not exactly easy, is it? To grab this and twist. It just kind of slides. So, not as easy as that looks. And I imagine if I could get a good grip on this, you could potentially twist this round like that, and it might snap the snap that part that's locking this. But really, it's not the weakest link. The weakest link is this cable. And yeah, I mean, if you pull that out of the way. Snap that, snip that cable pretty easy. The only question is how can we grip this so that it's... I mean we could use one of those adjustable... Um, what are they called? Adjustable wrenches? Maybe grip onto that nice and tight and then twist this lock around until it snaps. Maybe. Let me see. I mean, there's also the possibility of just twisting this lock itself. Maybe. Round and around until something gives. But yeah, it's just, that doesn't seem very practical, to be honest. I think the quickest way through it would just be to snip the cable, honestly. So yeah. Um. Yeah, we know, we all know how we could, we'd cut that cable. Pretty simple stuff. Let's just put this combination in. And... You know, let's just see if we can disassemble this to see if we can change that combination. Maybe we can. So I'd need to get a little clip remover or something in there. Really, that would help us to remove this little clip. You know, it wants to come out. Let me I'll show you that closer. That little clip there. I believe it's possible to get that little clip out. Just like that. And now, we should be able to take the wheels off. Whoop. Hmm. 
So we have this. Let's see. Interesting. We have a look at each of these wheels for a moment. We'll just put that there. So yeah, we, we removed this little clip here. And then inside of the wheel, if you can see that, we have this washer that also has a gate in it, like that. And then, yeah, the wheel itself, if we have a look at that, see, that's what the one side looks like. If you flip it over, it's got these little dimples along the other side for some reason. Um, maybe it's for when you change the position of the wheel, it makes a little clicking sensation or something. Really not sure why that's there. Maybe this will tell us. So if we have a look, excuse me, if we have a look at the other part of this wheel at the moment, we can see there. <coughs> can see that there. Looks like it has a little indent or something that might actually sit interact with those little dimples, right? So let's put him there for a second. Excuse me. Put this guy here. So I believe he sits something like that. And then we take this guy off. Oh, okay. Yeah, we take this guy off. We can. Maybe a pair of tweezers will be a better choice for this. I don't really see how you would change the combinations though, if anything. Okay. So I'm just going to zoom out so we can see all of this so far. So we have a clip, we have that washer, we have this. Then we have we have this followed by another washer followed by the wheel again with the dimples down. Then we have again one of these washer this wheel and we have here, which is another one of those. Quite sharp though. So I mean if you were disassembling this you want to be careful of your fingers since it's quite sharp. And yeah, that's the other end. what we could get if we try and pull on that. But yeah, that's uh, I guess that's just a solid piece of metal like this and for those of you interested to see how this piece interacts with that piece, we just put it through. You can see that's where the gaps line up. Nothing too fancy. And yeah, let's just for fun change that combination to something it's not meant to be. So we know that's a six, right? Let's just have a look here for a second. Well, that's um, okay, just for fun. I want to see something here. So this has number one there where the gap is, right? This one has a six where the gap is. And I would presume then that this one has a 6 where the gap is, no? No, that has a 1 where the gap is. Okay, so opposite of that is a 6. Right, right. Obviously the opposite of the other one is a 1. Okay. That means it has to be... have to be like this. 
in order to be in the right position for the combination. So just for fun I'll make the combination 166 instead. So now that we know it's 166, all I have to do is reassemble it, right? So let's reassemble it and check if the combination of 166 works. So excuse me. This you know that guy goes on first. So put him on. Then this guy goes on next. He lines up like that. And we put this guy on like this. Happy days. Followed by next washer. Just the reverse of what we did. And this guy goes on next, I suppose. Nope, he goes the other way. That. And then we put the wheel on again. And we put the washer on. Making sure that the little gap there is at the top. Put that one on. Put that one on. Put the washer. Excuse me. Put the washer on. And well, next thing, last thing, uh, is this guy. So, how would we put him on? Just like that, pretty simple actually. So, this is all lined up now. And if we look at the position of this, ah, okay. So the current new combination is 661. So you have to do it in reverse actually if you want it to be 166. So, like I said, there's the other possible combination. We had, we had 616, we can have 661, and we can have 166. So if you really wanted to change the combination of this, this is how you would do it. Since I believe this is how they assemble the lock anyway. So there we go, that's on. Happy days. Let's just confirm now that the old combination does not work. So the old combination, you can check here, was 6616. Six, so we line up those wheels. Six one six does not work. We put in our new combination, which is six six one, and change this one to one. Yeah, let's make sure everything's lined up. Yeah, there we go. It opens. So, well, there we go. If uh, if you really wanted to change the combination on the an Abus an Abus 34340 6C, you can if you really want. So yeah, there you go. That's changing the combination, I guess, on a Abus cheap cable lock.